Right, hello there everyone, welcome back to James Redman TV and welcome to another StreamYard format video. I feel like these are more informative and I also I can pull up more things on the screen and slightly better quality also with a decent microphone. The only thing I fear is the Wi-Fi because I'm still hooked up to the internet when I'm recording these videos. But if you enjoy, then be sure to smash a like and here we're, to, we're well, we are here to talk about Cheek Decore. Biazzi has been probably the most linked CDM with the club. Also, he seems to be a top priority from the fans' point of view and there's been a few sources linking with us, um, linking us with him today and I thought it was important to not only break down is he a good player but is he better than the priority targets in which we was looking at before one of which being Romeo Lavia so that's what we're going to discuss in today's video but only if you enjoy because if you don't then you might as well smash a dislike there's no point in watching content in which you don't enjoy I don't think that's entirely productive what is productive is letting me know a little bit of feedback in the comments down below do you like the content do you not like the content what do you want me to do to improve uh, but as for now let's have a look at our latest Target, if you will, um, cheek to core. Also, allow me to mention, I'm I, I'm a huge fan of Paulinho. I just think he's great on the ball, and I also think he brings a lot off the ball in terms of reading the game well. And I do think he'd be a quality addition, but it doesn't seem to be a name who we're linked with. And also, he's considerably older than cheek to core. De core is only 23 years of age. He was highly favoured in the French league a couple of years ago, along with the likes of Tushio Mani. So that's why I think it's interested to still entertain this player. And the more that I research. I'm not too shabby if this was the signing that we made, but then price tag matters. So let's have a little look at the details. So first and foremost, this seems to be the most reliable quoted tweet um, in which I've seen Dave Ockoff, who's, you know, he quotes other people's uh, news and stuff like this as well. And then this is from the Independent. So it says, Liverpool are stepping up their efforts uh, to sign Cheek to Corey. His price tag could be under £60 million, which is a lot less than the £80 million that I've been hearing about. But then the real question, and that's why we do these videos, is can we trust the Independent? And can we trust them to say we can't or... Do they have the information reliable enough to suggest that Cheek de Corre is the one that we're looking at? Because as far as I'm concerned, if we're going to look at the statistics, uh, the stats and all the people that we're looking at, we could be looking at various amounts of people. And we do know that Liverpool make their decision based on stats as well. This is just another source, Indy Football, saying Cheek de Corre is now Liverpool's priority for the number six role. So out of the six names that we've been linked with, he's apparently number one. And then this was another source that I've seen. Shout out to Jordan. I don't know how credible he is, but my guy, he says, Decore has already told teammates he's going to Anfield. So I don't know if Jordan has somehow leaked into the cheeky DMs, you know what I mean? Because um, I looked at his account before and he doesn't look like a Crystal Palace player who chills in the dressing room. However... You never know. You might have some credibility with what he's saying there. So based on the journalism, that's what we need to analyse first. Are these credible? Out of 10, you're not going to get higher than a 5 from me. I feel like that we are interested in Cheek Decore. But is there to a point where we can say he's the number one priority? Not necessarily. I mean, I suppose Dave Ockart worded it in a way that is fine. We're stepping up our efforts, whatever that means. Um, but it certainly doesn't mean that we're in concrete links with the player as of right now. Now, there was this tweet which I found very encouraging and said if Decore is gettable for £50 million then you can see why Klopp was reluctant to go uh, that high for Lavia when right now Decore is better so bear in mind we missed out on Caicedo we then went in for Lavia and both targets chose and opted for Chelsea now I'm not one to judge my players based on sole statistical data but I do think it helps in a regard, not the overall regard, because Lavia was lovely on the ball, and I think he's got a higher ceiling than what Decore does, which is important to note. Ceilings matter. But in terms of the short-term solution, is Decore better? Well, let's have a little look. I mean, Decore is slightly older, first and foremost, but these are their stats, I believe, from the previous season. If I do just look at that again, in fact, it doesn't say, but I do believe this will be over the previous season. Bear in mind, Lavia's only had one season as well. So assists-wise, Decore is more impressive. Bear in mind, Decore was in the slightly better team. Big chances created. Seems like Decore was better on that front. Um, passes made, more passes. Pass completion is also uh, very, very close, but Lavia actually trumps him on that one. And if you go through all the stats, really, you're noticing Decore, he's trumping. Lavia on many of them. Now, listen, even through balls and stuff like this, I found Lavia very, very entertaining on the ball. And I think if he was in a team which is more possession adherent, then I think he could do very, very well. And that's why I thought he'd do very well in our team. And I think it's a stylistic difference between these two players. I think Decore is more of that defensive outlet who is fine on the ball, but he's no more 
than fine on the ball. Um, I, th- I think that's all we can say about Decore. Whereas Lavia, I think he's got top talent on the ball. And I think there's a reason why he was identified by Pep Guardiola, etc. And I think that's why not but top teams have been in for Lavia. Um, and the reason why Decore has kind of just been left at, at Crystal Palace and not really being noticed. Um, that being said, these are the first set of stats. There is also a second page as well. This one is, um, I want to make sure that you guys can see that fairly visibly. Uh, let me make sure. Can I zoom in a little bit more? I believe I can. Bash, bash, bash. Just want to make sure you guys can see that. I mean, it hasn't really done much. All right. So that was the team play stats. This is now the defendants. That's I can't really zoom in for some reason. Um, five goal, uh, sorry, five clean sheets opposed to two. Again, both in very poor teams. Um, goals conceded 41 to 50. Uh, 13 blocks to 11 blocks, 56 interceptions to 33 interceptions. So just know you are getting much more of a physical specimen and someone who can read the game better defensively with Decore. I'd say Decore is more of a like-for-like for for Fabinho. I I think Lavia was always meant to be that sort of holding player who's pressure resistant and can maintain possession for you. Because I know Jürgen Klopp mentions in an interview earlier in the season, he's now aiming to be more possession-based, which although Fabinho was okay at, he was more of a sidewards passer as opposed to someone who was more progressive. And I think Decore falls under that same mould, opposed to Lavia, who's more of a ball carrier. And I think he's very good at being a ball carrier. And I think with a higher ceiling, he can certainly get much better. So it's a tough one. It depends what you're wanting. And it really depends what the manager wants. But if this is now the next option, this is a stylistically different player for sure. Uh, last man tackles, no player had to make any last man tackles. Clearances, we've saw Decore make a lot more, which to be honest, when you saw our set piece defending at the weekend, you could have probably thought, yeah, I'll, I'll take that from Decore, some some clearances, uh, head of clearances, uh, Decore trumps him. And the same with all the other stats over here as well. Ed is leading to goal, Lavia has got one more. So it seems that Decore is the safer option on a defensive front. Is that enough for you guys to go ahead and want Decore? Is that enough? Do you think that's enough substance at 23 years of age? Now, whether it's 60 million, let's say, if it's worst case scenario, 80 million, is this one that we actually look at and go, okay, then Decore seems to make sense? Or is it another CDM that we're just actually thinking, oh, do you know what, actually, if he weren't number one priority, if he weren't number two priority, will he be world class enough to then become the player that we want him to become? He is an ideal age, and I do think he doesn't change our system too much going from Fabinho to Decore. It's not my number one. I would edge Polina. I think he's better on the ball. And I also think he's more experienced and a little bit more of right here right now. A little bit more guarantee. And I, I invested in the idea of going for Lavia because I really like the ceiling of Lavia. But Decore, I don't know if he becomes world class. I think he becomes good, maybe even very good. But does he become Fabinho levels? I don't think so. And, and even though Lavia weren't like for like for Fabinho, I think he could have got to that level. And I believe he can now at Chelsea. So although those stats go into Decore's favour, no doubt, um, I do think a better team has a part to play in this, but I also think the fact that Decore is 23 and Lavia is 19, I think there's also an experience factor. And Lavia was literally in the worst team last season as well with Southampton. So still impressive from both guys. Let me know who you would have preferred out of Lavia and Decore. And is Decore a guy that you would take? For me, I wouldn't mind him. Believe me, I'm taking anyone at this point. I'm a starving homeless person who just needs some players. You know what I'm saying? But in this instance, I'm going to just sit there and, and say, give me Polina. If we can't get him, then I'll settle for Tecore. He's not the worst option out there in the world. And Crystal Palace is a good team for identifying talent. So that's something that I'm willing to entertain too. But I'm really intrigued to know your point of view. The only reason why I've brought this up is, one, to assess the credibility of the source. Not really too strong at the moment. If it was strong, then is this a player that we take? For me, it seems that in the short term, it would be better than Lavia on a statistical basis. But is it better from a long-term basis? And is it better from what Klopp is trying to build, which is a more on-the-ball, possession-style team? That's the real question. Will we have to change the formation? Will we have to change the style of play if we get to Corey and slot him in there? Let's just say he doesn't adhere to the technical ability which we need. And again, I think he's fine technically, but is he what we need? That is the real question. But anyway, guys, that's going to be the end of this video. I'd love it if you could smash a like. And again, any constructive feedback in the comments down below, you know, welcome to it. I'm not really too, I'm not someone who, uh, take, I, I take criticism very well. And in fact, it improves me. So I encourage it in the comments down below. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please smash a like, continue to subscribe. And I will see you guys later. Sayonara.